In this talk, we will cover some additional ontology concepts. We will discuss different characteristics of all properties and see how these characteristics can be used to describe our concepts. Additionally, we will also cover the capabilities of ontology reasoners and the services and attributes which they have to offer. Each object property may have a corresponding inverse property. Inverse properties are used to define the inverse of a given relationship. If some property links individual A to individual B, then its inverse property will link B to A. For example, in the figure, you can see the has child property as the inverse of the has parent property. If John has parent Smith, then Smith can automatically be linked with John to the inverse has child property. The figure at the bottom shows the protege interface of defining the inverse property where it can be defined by simply clicking and selecting the appropriate property. OWL also allows for assigning different meanings to object properties which are commonly known as property characteristics. Let's discuss these briefly with the help of examples. If a property is functional then for a given individual there can be at most one individual that is linked to it using the property. The figure shows an example of a functional property has birth mother. A person can only have one birth mother. If we say that the individual gene has birth mother Peggy and we also say that the individual gene has birth mother Margaret, then because has birth mother is a functional property, we can infer that Peggy and Margaret must be the same individual. It should be noted, however, that if Peggy and Margaret were explicitly stated to be two different individuals, then the above statements would lead to an inconsistency. If a property is inverse functional, then it means that the inverse property is functional. Therefore, for a given individual as a range, an inverse functional property can have a maximum of one individual defined as the domain of the property. Figure here shows an example of an inverse functional property is birth mother of. This is the inverse property of has birth mother. Since has birth mother is functional, is birth mother of is inverse functional. If we state that Peggy is the birth mother of Jean, and we also state that Margaret is the birth mother of Jean, then we can infer that Peggy and Margaret are the same individual. The transitive properties are very useful to automatically infer the chain of relations among multiple individuals. If a transitive property links A with B and also B with C, then this characteristic will automatically link A with C to transitive inference as shown in this figure for the transitive property has ancestor. If the individual Matthew has an ancestor that is Peter and Peter has an ancestor William, then we can infer that Matthew has an ancestor that is William. Symmetric properties state that if A is linked with B, using such a property then B should also be linked with A using the same property. The adjacent figure demonstrates the symmetric property has sibling. Asymmetric property carries inverse meanings as compared to the symmetric property. If a property P is asymmetric and the property relates individual A to individual B, then individual B cannot be related to A via the same property P. The figure here shows an example of an asymmetric property has child. If the individual gene is related to the individual Matthew via the has child property, then it can be inferred that Matthew is not related to gene via the has child property. A property P is said to be reflexive if it must link the individual A to itself. An example of a reflexive property is knows. Since every person always knows himself or herself, 
in addition to knowing others, knows is defined as a reflexive property in the figure. Unlike reflexive properties, if an irreflexive property links an individual A with B, then they both can never be marked as the same individual. An example of irreflexive property is mother of is shown in the figure. Data type properties link an individual to an XML schema data type value or an RDF literal. In other words, they describe relationships between an individual and data values. Most of the property characteristics described for object properties cannot be used with data type properties. As shown in the figure, a data type property can only be defined as functional, which implies that the property can take at most one unique value as range. The property has age is defined as a functional property and the range of the property is selected to be an integer value. OWL supports a rich variety of data types such as URI, strings, numbers and data time variables as depicted by this figure. One of the key features of ontologies that are described using OWL DL is that they can be processed by a reasoner. A reasoner is a software that is used to derive new facts from existing ontologies. Ontology reasoning reduces the redundancy of information in the knowledge base and helps in finding conflicts in the contents. One of the main services offered by a reasoner is to test whether a class is a subclass of another one. By performing such tests on the classes in an ontology, it is possible for a reasoner to compute the inferred ontology class hierarchy. The figure here shows the highlighted text as the one automatically inferred by the reasoner. The class offspring is defined as a person having a parent or some other person. Based upon the definition of offspring and that of the class daughter, the reasoner infers that daughter is a subclass of offspring. Another standard service that is offered by reasoners is consistency checking. Based on the description of a class, the reasoner can check whether or not it is possible for the class to have any instances. A class is deemed to be inconsistent if it cannot possibly have any instances. In the example here, we have defined the property has gender as functional, which implies that any instance of person can have only one gender. Then we have deliberately defined the class mother to have both male and female gender, which can be captured by the reasoner as inconsistent. And the class is shown as red, reflecting inconsistencies. Different types of reasoners are available for use, having varying sets of capabilities. Some of the examples of common ontology reasoners are given here. We will be using the palette reasoner for our practice. Palette is very popular and efficient and comes installed with the default ProtJ version. The capabilities of different reasoners are defined by the attributes which they carry. Let's look at a demo of how to use the palette reasoner inside ProtJ and some of its main attributes. For demonstrational purposes, we have wrongly defined the mother class to have both the male and female genders. On the other hand, the property has gender is defined as functional and hence it can take only one unique value. Additionally, we have also defined male gender as different from the female gender, which implies that instances are not the same. Now we go to the reasoner menu and check that the palette reasoner is selected and then click on the run reasoner option. Palette runs in the background and delivers the inferred hierarchy. Here we can see that the mother class is shown in red by the reasoner. This implies that the class is inconsistent. Justification attribute of ontology reasoners provides suitable explanation or counterexamples for inconsistencies that exist in the ontologies. Our palette reasoner supports the justification attribute. 
we can get this justification by clicking on the explain inference question mark this opens a new dialog box which gives the justification for the class mother by proving that that uh, the, the reason why it's inconsistent a box reasoning is the reasoning over individuals such as automatic classification and checking inconsistency of instances whereas t box reasoning is the inference over classes not all reasoners support a box reasoning as we can see in the figure the palette reasoner supports a box reasoning as it has automatically classified instances mary and sue as members of the class daughter rule support attribute empowers the reasoner to combine rule reasoning with ontologies we will cover this later and look at how rules can supplement the capabilities of owl based ontologies in conclusion we discussed different features of owl properties and learned how these characteristics can be used to precisely describe the knowledge object properties support a variety of characteristics as discussed in the lecture on the other hand since data type properties connect individuals with rdf literals they can only be defined as functional we also discussed different capabilities of ontology reasoners and covered a few of their services examples and attributes reasoners are used to infer new information by formally analyzing the available information 